Hello, we find ourselves uh, back at the 2810 working on the radiator. My soldering took, uh, then we put it on, ran it, I don't know, for a half hour, covered up the radiator with a piece of cardboard there, sitting on the ground, and you kind of do a pressure test on it. Of course, uh, one, a couple of the cores started leaking. Um, so I'm not to say I wasted my time soldering the radiator. But I guess it's a good way to uh, learn how to do it. It worked, and uh, there's no pressure to see if it lasts a long time uh, <laughs> since we got a new one. So I got the old radiator off again for the second time. Drained more antifreeze out again for the second time. I hope it doesn't spill too much on the ground. And we already have our new radiator. It looks just like the old radiator. Tip there is a, well, a little more black paint on it, and it's slightly cleaner. Uh, a couple differences. Well, the new one doesn't have faux moco stamped on the top. What this one has is a nice little silver sticker that says it was made in the Czech Republic. I guess I'd take that over, uh, you know, China or someplace over in Asia ways. Of course, there are a lot of tractors now. A lot of small tractors especially are made in, like, Turkey, Czech Republic area. I don't know if just they have easier regulations for building stuff uh, or what. Or that's just where a lot of the small tractor companies still are, and they use smaller tractors over there, you know. The only tractors built in the U.S. are probably 150 horse plus, and then at that point, it's so hard to ship the things, it's easier to build them here. Well, that might be part of the reason why I don't want to buy a new tractor. Uh, but we'll talk about that another day. I um, had a request now uh, to make a reason why a video about why we like Fords and International so much. Um, we'll get to that. But right now, we're focusing on the radiator. And the other difference is the return tube to the pump is fully round and this one had a big oval thing going on even though i don't even but i don't even think this bit down here the base of radiator is any bigger than this old one um, i think the tubes are slightly closer together with a little less space between the fins but it's a good attempt at an aftermarket radiator um, i already put the new stopcock in I guess we're ready to try to put it in place. Now I've got no good spot to sit, you guys. While well, we have fun. Take these little red caps off. If I ever want to cap something. Yeah, probably leave that one in. It's like a radiator. This is one expensive piece of copper. Oh, come on. Don't, ah. Oh. Man, I'm already have to make alterations. Come on. Ah, it's the tight fit. I'm okay with tight fits. It ain't right if it ain't tight. There you go. Oh, then you just pop right in. Okay, that's cool. And these fan shrouds are the most hard to find piece of plastic. The 2910, well, that one broke. We had to try to find a new one. Needless to say, we didn't find a new one, but we seem to be doing okay without a fan shroud on it. Oh, come on. Ah. Put that thing back where it came from. And this is probably how they get broken, it's right here. When you're trying to put the radiator on. There we go. Looks like we uh, got two bolts in. Oh, I shouldn't have put the stop cock back in. Don't give me that sass. Come on. Really? Yeah. Bit of a light struggle here. Um, 
really there are those days where you just can't catch a break. It seems like January hit and just everything has been a money pit. Couldn't get the 14 to start last night. The batteries were all but dead and they wouldn't take a charge. They're 10 year old batteries, they probably need to be replaced, but still. Just all at once. Oh, well, maybe that'll get out of my way. Get out of my way. Which, oh. Really, we're gonna be fighting over the stupid damn stuff. Oh. Okay. There we go. Too many fights at once. Try to have things prepared. I still can't get it together. I'll wipe some of the dirt off the line. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Of course, the fan's in the way. There's just enough little differences. Like down here, it bows in, and this is a flat side. That's the only joy of replacement aftermarket parts. I wish we could get OEM. The problem is, I think getting through the dealer uh, would have been the same way. We went through a little radiator shop to get this. He had a better deal figured since we'd already replaced the tube it wasn't worth the pain of trying to recore it okay that's in place i guess hopefully the fan clears all the way around mostly that's on that's close you guys might want to see this <laughs> oh the joys of aftermarket parts so we had the lovely little curve in the old Raiders you can see here in the uh, the fan shroud. And it was a real struggle because I had to push this down. And the reason why this tube was oval or elongated was such that the fan shroud didn't interfere with the tube there. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark, but it touches. So I was really like squeezing and pressing down up here, trying to get those two screws started. I don't think we're gonna get a good enough lineup to even put a screw in that bottom hole. I'll come back to the other side. Oh, hey, look, more stuff in the way. Yeah, that's, um, gonna need some screwdriver work right there to pull it over, but at least, uh, hey, that hole right there looks like it lines up. I really hope um, that the difficulties I'm having getting the fan shroud on won't cause anything to won't cause anything to touch or you know problems down the line here. Let me get this top one started. Now, being fresh, just just plain drilled holes in the metal here on the side of the radiator. These screws are meant to cut their own threads. So they're a little tough turning the first time in. Of course, this is why I kind of have Popeye forearms. Just turning all these screws and things. Yeah, last night I was having a, a terrible breakdown over the fact that everything was being a money pit. I'm like, I just want to own less machinery right now, even though I like tractors and whatnot. I was having a moment of, I want less stuff to have to fix. Okay. Oh. I'm debating on whether I cut that little piece off or just go with it the way it is. Looks like I'm going with it the way it is. 
Not that I don't like altering stuff. But that means I gotta take the radiator apart to get this thing out, to take get the saws out, to notch that out. This plastic's hard and brittle, but I'm not gonna cut it like with a utility knife or anything. I'm gonna have to go a little saw blade. And with time, I'm sure it'll bend to fit. It'll eventually relax. Oh, there. So you've got the threads cut out. It turns in nice and easy. Um, i trying to think. This is the first radiator we've placed in a while, replaced. Uh, the 1890 silage chopper, it needs one because it has a little leak in one of the cores. That's not an age thing. Somebody actually ran into it. Well, not that we can see in here very well. By we, I mean you viewers. But it looks like the fan and the shroud right there, nice and close up, will clear. So my best attempt to jam this thing on here has worked. Okay, so all we got to do is tighten up this hose and clamp up top. And the one down low, and fill it up. So, we'll get back with you.